In this video, I'm going to show you how to get started with Arista Networks. And if you never heard about Arista Networks, don't worry, you're going to learn everything that you need to become a successful network engineer with Arista Networks. Now, in short, Arista is a Cisco competitor, meaning they also make network devices like switches for different use cases, enterprise, campus, data center, service provider, whatever. But this is not a marketing video. We're just going to focus on the technical side of getting started with a recent network. More precisely, how to start configuring a recent devices. So to do that, we'll be using our network simulator. In my case, I'll be using PNet, but you can use even G, Cisco CML or any other simulator like GNS3. First, we need to download the image from Arista Networks itself, okay? You don't have to pay anything and the images are available to download without contract support or anything else, okay? So just go to arista.com and here on support, we're going to click it and select software download. Now here you will have to create a new user account and you're going to fill with your information there and you'll be able to start downloading the images. Okay, so after creating the account, we're going to download two files. So first let's go to VEOS and here we're going to select uh, a boot. So for instance, let's select 802 and we're going to download this file. And the other file, we're going to select any other version. In my case, I'm going to select 433 and I'm going to download this file and it with Kikau 2. Now we're going to grab those two files and send them to PNET Lab. And I'm going to use WinCP for that. So, yeah, in my PNET Lab. And I'm going to drop on this directory opt unit lab add ons chemo. And so I'm going to add a new folder here, new directory. And it has to start with VOS hyphen. And I'm just going to grab the version of this image okay so vos 433.4m okay so now i'm going to open this directory so this is the new one and i'm going to send the first file so this is going to be the the hard disk okay and now we're going to send the other one okay it's done so the iso file we're going to rename this to cd rom and this other file key call, ending with key call 2 we're going to change this to hda okay so we have cd-rom and hda file okay so we can close this and now let me bring my pnet and we have to fix the permissions okay so here we go to system system setting fix permission Okay, fix permission successfully. Great, which means now we can uh, create a lab. So let's go to, in my case, labs, create a new one, Arista test lab. Let's add this. I'm just going to delete this. And also background, I like to use dark mode. Okay, so let's add uh four nodes okay four okay and let's build this topology so we can power on and let's use the connection here so one 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 and here we're going to use interface two Okay, so let's power on the other switches as well. Okay, and it's going to start uh, loading. Okay, so during the boot process, we're going to press S E S C to skip, and it's going to continue uh, booting the switch. Now, if we try to log in now, we won't be able to do so because it's still loading. Okay, so give it a couple minutes and we're going to try again. 
Okay, now the image is ready to be used and by default the credentials are admin password blank. Okay, no password. And if you've been using Cisco devices, more precisely Cisco iOS, this is going to look a lot like a Cisco device. You won't tell the difference whether you are using a Cisco or a Rista switch. Let me show you. So for example, this is the uh, disabled mode or without any privilege. So if we want to go to the privilege mode, like we do on Cisco devices, all we have to do is type uh, enable. Okay. And now we are at the privilege mode. And if we want to start configuring things such as changing the host name, all we have to do is to go to, to type configure and we can start configuring. Now, one thing that I recommend you to disable after booting up the switch is to disable this zero touch uh, uh, message that's going to be uh, on prompt all the time. And to do that, we're going to type the command zero touch uh, disable. Okay. So we're going to do it for all the switches and it's going to cause the switch to reboot again. So let's log in on this one. Configure. Okay, so zero touch disable. Let's do the same here. Admin configure zero disable. Last one. Admin. Okay, the switches are back and let's see if we can do some basic configuration. Okay, this is supposed to be a beginner uh, video, so I'm not going to do anything fancy like lag, mlag, all this kind of stuff, but just going to keep it very simple. So let's try to assign IP address and see if we can like run some ping commands in this topology. And how do we do that? So we know these are switches and by default the switches they have a vlan so we can use the same commands like we use on cisco ios so show vlan brief to see how many vlans we have on this switch and we have only one vlan and we can even take a look at um spanning tree for this vlan and it's in the forwarding state by default it's using mstp Okay, so let's keep it simple. Let's assign an IP address to this uh, VLAN. Uh, so let's configure. Just to make things easier, I'm going to change the host name to VOS2. And let's get into VLAN1. And I'm going to use the subnet 192.168.0. And the last OTET is going to be the switch number. In this case, it's going to be 2. 555 and it's going to use a slash 24 okay so let's take a look at my routing table and i have the subnet 192.168.0.0 okay and i can use the command do ping do ping 192.168.0.2 it works but i can also use 192.168.0.2 and it's going to have the same output great Let's do the same on the other switches. So let's go to switch one. So admin, okay, configure. Let's first change the host name. So it's going to be VOS one, VOS one, host name VOS one, interface VLAN one, one nine two one six eight zero one, and the mask. Just make sure it's working so zero one and switch one should be able to ping switch two by now okay so now let's go to switch three so login admin enable configure host name vos3 interface vlan one ip address 192.168.0.3 zero no shot just make sure and i should be able to ping zero one and zero two okay lastly switch four admin enable configure let's change the host name vos4 the face vlan one one nine two one six eight zero four okay make sure to enable the interface 
and I should be able to ping one. And I think I can use that. Uh, let's send two packets. Two. No, that's not. Oh, it's ambiguous, which means that I need something else. Okay, two packets. And what about three? Okay, and four. Well, I, I, my interface is working. Okay, so this is basic configuration, like assigning an IP address to the interface. Uh, we could also, for instance, enable router or SPF, right? And probably we can set an instance ID. Okay, IP routing not enabled, and set the network 192.168. 0, 0 and then the wildcard mess that would be 2552455 and then the area 0 what else done and probably on switch 3 spf1 network 9216800 and the wildcard mask area 0 and probably the router the switches would establish adjacency. Okay, let's double check by using command show IP or SPF interface. But it doesn't seem to be working. So now let's enable IP routing because it's complaining all the time. So IP routing. So now let's run show IP or SPF interface. And we can see that OSPF now is enabled on this interface. Okay, so neighbor count still zero. Okay, what about show IP OSPF neighbor? And we can see that it's started to uh, negotiate the adjacency with switch three. So right now is in two way state and probably is going to change to other state. And now it's in full BDR uh, state. So if we run again, show IP or SPF neighbor, we have 192.168.03, but we don't see anything there. Uh, so let's uh, do the following interface loop back zero, IP address, so 444, 545, 555, and IP or SPF1 area zero. So how do I do that? Okay, IP, let's do this again, IP SPF area zero, okay, and let's see if this is going to be advertised into OSPF, so show IP route OSPF, and we can see now that it's being advertised as OSPF, so now we have switch kind of working as a router because we enabled the routing functionalities. Again, I don't want to go beyond this because the main idea with this video was just to help you get started with Arista switches. But you can see that essentially if you have some background with Cisco iOS devices, you can very easily start using Arista switches. Okay, so this is it, guys. I hope you found this video useful. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, and I'll see you on the next one.